So for the most part, I finally finished it, guys. I was buffing and waxing my 2007 Four Winds uh, 238 Vista, and uh, it turned out pretty good. Um, it's okay. I, if I did it again, I could probably do a better job of it. This is the sun side, and uh, just to give you an idea of how it turned out, this is kind of where we are with it. Um, I could do a lot more. I mean, if I was so inclined, which at this point I'm kind of not because this has been 18 hours of work, I would do the sections from here to here all the way down the bow, um, you know, and up here. But uh, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of losing the space that I've been able to use. Uh, our Alum Creek storage people have been so so kind to, to allow me to use this area to uh, work on my boat here. Um, but a lot of people have been asking, uh, you know, what kind of products I was using and, and what I did. It's, it's the first time for me, so I basically YouTubed it, and uh, that's kind of how I did it. And just figured it out from there, asked around. Uh, so here, come on, I'll show you what I did, what the, the products and, and things that I use. So first off, we have the, uh, the ever-beloved, coveted Honda 2000 generator, which most boaters know is, uh, is the key, man. It's, this thing runs almost dead silent, which is a really nice, really nice thing. Uh, you'll need an extension cord because most of the equipment that you use for this has a really short cord like this here. Years ago, my mom gave me this uh, Pro Finisher buffer, and uh, I thought to myself when she gave it to me, I ain't never gonna use a buffer. But little did I know that I would be using this buffer for this, uh, for this project, and it's worked out really well. Uh, buffer heads, I've used the uh, like a, a terry cloth kind of fleece thing to apply my buffing compound. Then I used a fluffier version of that to do my initial buffing. These are bonnets that actually go on the uh, on the buffer. And then for my polishing portion, you can see here I bought this uh, a polisher. So these buffing bonnets are nice, but they're not ideal. The ideal ones look like 70s shag or, or some sort of carpet or something. Uh, and they, they work really, really well. I was unable to find one of those and didn't want to run from place to place, you know, in this COVID-19 environment uh, looking for it. Um, so another cool thing that I did that halfway through I realized the sanding was going to be a ridiculously long job so I purchased this Milwaukee sander I originally got a Roby one and it got hot popped made a noise and started smoking in my hand after about four hours of use so this one is great and this base right here works perfectly with the wet dry sandpaper that I got. It's easy to put the sandpaper in. Uh, it's it's easy to handle, the, ha the handle is nice. It doesn't vibrate your hands and your arms to death. It's not too heavy, so that you'll reach muscle failure. Now, as far as sandpaper, uh, a lot of people on Facebook had some questions as far as what I was using. And I use uh, 3M products. And what I was doing, because we had such heavy oxidation on this boat. I used 800, then 1,000, then 1,500, then 2,000, which is very, very fine and smooth. And I didn't think each one would make that much difference, but I can tell you, after you finish one set of paper and you go to the finer one, it's it's so satisfying because you start all over again and you can see that you're, you're cutting through oxidation all over again. Um, for lack of knowledge or lack of better uh, information i used turtle wax products so i use uh automobile products i don't know if that's a good idea i don't know some people probably tell you don't use that but like i used a turtle wax rubbing compound so i don't necessarily endorse this stuff but 
it worked for me. And I just put the rubbing compound on with a pad like that there. And um, you got to rub that on. The thing is, is you got to cover all the cracks and stuff like that. And then you rub it off. Now, I learned that really late in the game. So I was fighting with the buffer trying to, I guess, buff that stuff in. But it doesn't really buff in. You fill the cracks with it. And, you know, you buff it to a, a kind of a dull shine after having rubbed it off. And you don't let it dry. Don't do it in heat. Don't do it in the sun. So the weather we've had has been kind of perfect for that. After that's done, I make a couple of passes with that. I was moving on to this uh, Turtle Wax Super Hard Shell Finish. And uh, this stuff is, this is where the magic happens. This is where this becomes fun, you know. You turn the music up and, and you actually get to see some shine start to happen. So that's what I was doing with that. Um, and it seals it and protects it, um, I guess. I mean, like I said, a, a lot of people may have better advice than I do because I've never done this before. Um, so I started the whole process with taking rags like this one. And I wiped the whole boat down with water. I always use two rags because I use one and it gets oxidation on it. Then I use another one. Uh, two rags also I use later in the process to wipe the excess buffing compound and stuff like that off. I use this terry cloth rag that a lot of boaters use for the inside of their boat when it's wet. And, uh, you know, I use that with a little spray water and then take everything off. And then I use another one that's dry. And... Uh, other than that, I mean, I when, when I initially wipe it down, and one of the things that you want to do to make your sanding go smoother is use, I use windshield wiper fluid half and half with water, and I spray that on, and that just makes this sander just glide so smoothly, and when you have it wet like that, you can kind of tell when you need to stop and when you need to keep going. There's, you know, you can feel it. It's hard to describe. I was wondering why guys online couldn't describe to me exactly when do you stop using, let's say, you know, the 1000 and go to the 2000 paper. But you'll know. It gets smooth. It gets glassy and glossy. And and uh, and you're able to tell at that point. Um, so that's kind of it. I mean, here I'll show you the other side. Um... I can't tell you how much work this is. And you can see there's some dull areas. Like I can see that up in here, there's, you know, you know change my angle a little bit. It, it's just a little bit dull. And that's because you can see where my sanding effort was not as good here as it was here. See what I mean? So you can see kind of my reflection and then you can see it dull as I move down to this area here. But, I did what I could do. Uh, I'd also like to do the transom, the rear of the boat. Um, and you can see I have some discoloration and some watermarks down in this area down here. But, uh, and we'll get to that and some stuff on the upper deck. I'd love to do this. I'd love to do the rest of this area up here uh, just to complete the package. And we're gonna get rid of all of this uh, like this antenna is going this season. This thing has been broken for a while. And so we're gonna get a more modern, shorter antenna. Um, there's also, you know, the a lot of dings and chips and stuff like this. Something like this, you need to epoxy uh, and um, fill and sand it. But then you, you have a color issue, a color deficit. I have another deep ding right here, um, just from a crash landing in a storm. Uh, but then you have, you know, this area would be like gray or whatever the color of the epoxy is. And uh, and then you have to paint it. And I ain't doing that. So it is what it is. But, you know, she's an old boat, but she's in great shape. All the systems on this boat work great. And I sound like I'm going to be selling it soon. Look at these little things and stuff up here. I am. We'll be selling it. We're planning on upgrading soon enough. This may be our last year or second to last year with this boat, but it's been a fun project and uh, I'm so glad that people really got into it and asked a bunch of questions about it. Uh, so I thought I would just uh, answer those questions and show you some of the things. And the people here at Allen Creek Storage have been so cool as far as letting us use this 
this uh, this part of their facility because normally they don't do this. Here's a cool little point about their place. See these 5G towers? I don't like anything about 5G, but this is a cool thing. If you buy a piece of property that has these towers on it, they send you a check every month. And this place has about five or six of those towers. That's a nice little part of this business model. They've done great. They have all of this space. They store boats and RVs. Back here, they've built like a little house area and uh, it's really neat in there. They have a weight room and whole bed. It's pretty cool. Then they have uh, storage back here that's climate controlled and indoors. And uh, they've just done a really great business. This just started out as, as uh, something for the owner's wife to do and has turned out to be really the bread and butter for their family and their main business. But Allen Creek Storage, they've been good to us. But listen, thanks for your interest in this project. And you guys take care and be safe. And we'll see you on the water.